Hi folks, welcome back to Badger State Adventures. I'm Matt Ross, this is Jeremy Fisher. It's mid-March here in Wisconsin, uh, 2014. It was about this time last year that we were on the east side of the state in Manitowoc County, uh, laying down some film for some maple syrup video. So we got to see some really cool stuff over there. We kind of held off on the video until this year. We figured we'd put everything together um, and then roll it out this year. What we did is we did a two-part segment. We got a traditional part, traditional way of doing maple syrup, which is really cool. And then we also got to see a more modern facility um, with high-tech, you know, gadgets and the whole nine yards. That's right, Matt. We got to spend time with uh, Jesse Wagner. Uh, his operation is In the Woods Sugar Bush. Make sure you check it out on the internet. Um, Jesse's got a, uh, <clears throat> a really cool facility. Gravity lines um, gets pumped up into, uh, you'll hear us refer to it in the video, uh, RO, stands for reverse osmosis. It's just one of the steps in the process. Everything from uh, the bottling to, to the boiling down, um, we, we, got to, we got to experience some of that. It was really, really cool for us to see. Yeah, really neat facility. They can do a lot of syrup in a short amount of time. But then there, there was the other way of doing it. You know, you got the traditional way of doing it with buckets and, and taps. And, well, obviously you're going to have taps at, at Jesse's too, but he's running vacuum lines. But um, we did do some stuff with my brother and, and Tony and some of their buddies where they'll put hundreds of buckets out in the woods with taps. You know, taps in the trees, buckets hanging from there. They go out and actually physically collect all this syrup in the buckets transfer it over to a boiling station where you boil down sap for hours and hours on end. And it takes like 40 gallons of sap to make one gallon of syrup. So you kind of appreciate yeah. the kind of work and effort that goes into this stuff. And that's why pure maple syrup is, I mean, it's phenomenal. If you haven't had it, I urge you to try it. Yeah, we, uh, we kind of wanted to set it up a little bit this morning. We do have the two parts on it, but Matt and I were thinking about the pros and cons of real pure Wisconsin maple syrup to something that you would buy in the stores. Um, and I brought a bottle of <clears throat> pure Wisconsin maple syrup. And I have a bottle of not pure Wisconsin maple syrup. Yeah. It's just your run-of-the-mill brand you'll find in the store. And we figured what with you know what better way to do this than to maybe compare ingredients and Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well compare yeah. ingredients and maybe compare taste. Our favorite part. So uh, well you go first Matt and I'll tell you what I have. Alright, my first ingredient, I got corn syrup. Okay, I have pure maple syrup. Next I've got high fructose corn syrup. <clears throat> nope, I have pure maple syrup. Uh, water. Pure maple syrup. Cellulose gum. Yum. Pure maple syrup. <laughs> Caramel color. Pure maple syrup. Uh, salt. Why? I have pure maple syrup. There is a little bit of sodium in that I see, but that's oh yeah, I mean, that's pure ingredients. But pure maple syrup. Natural and artificial flavor. All natural flavor. Pure maple syrup. Sodium benzoate and sorbic acid. Yum. I feel like putting that in your mouth? <laughs> I prefer this pure maple syrup. Uh, and then the last one I've got here is sodium. Hexametaphosphate. Hexameta... Pure maple syrup. You want to compare taste? <laughs> yes. I made this French toast. We might as well eat it. Can I try yours? Nothing like a little sodium meta hexaphosphates. Something like that. You know, it doesn't even taste like maple syrup. Like it doesn't have that maple flavor to it. That true maple flavor. Right. This does. Can I have it back? No. You can't. But that's mine. No doubt, ladies and gentlemen, 
beer Wisconsin maple syrup is the way to go. It's a, it's a healthy way to go too. It's far better than anything you're gonna buy in a store, but we really think you'll enjoy the video, so check it out and and you know check us out on Facebook and our website and everything and hopefully you enjoy it. Thanks for checking us out. Remember, create your own adventure. Today we're over in eastern Wisconsin, Manitowoc County, taking a look at some maple syrup operations. This is Jesse Wagner. The name of his company over here is In the Woods Sugar Bush. Um, we're going to start right at the top. There's a couple different ways of doing maple syrup. You can do the buckets, collecting that way. Uh, what Jesse has here is a, a, a vast array of tubing, vacuum systems, you know, top of the line stuff. So we're going to we're just going to get right back down to the low point here where it all starts and. Uh, you can explain to us what's all going on here, and we're excited to see what it's all about. It's just... This will be the releaser where all the lines and all the sap come into this point. This is the low point in the woods where the tubing's all got gravity pitch on it, and it all ends up in the lowest part of the woods. Okay. Now, time of year, we're looking at, you know, maple syrup usually starts in March, I'm assuming. For our region, first week in March through the first week in April. Is a typical season. Okay. And this year's kind of different with the weather being as cold as it's been in the, in the late March here. You're, if we're looking at a shorter window, you told us earlier. Yep. So um, are you going to be looking at less less syrup or? Uh, not necessarily less sap. Our window's getting a little bit smaller because of the cold weather. We're into the third week of March already, and our season really did not start yet. And our window's closing on us for our time frame because once the hot weather comes and the trees start to bud, our, our season will be done. And what are your concerns, you know, the closer we get to April, is there a concern with the sap uh, getting the, bad on you? Or? No, not necessarily. The sap won't go bad. It's just that our window, our window will get a lot shorter and we may only have a few days to make a bunch of syrup versus having the whole month to make a bunch of syrup. Uh, so that, that's a concern. Uh, in northern Wisconsin, it ain't so bad. You know, they typically don't get started till now. But for our area, it's a little concern that we get get going here within the next week. Mm -hmm. So you got a, you got a pretty big operation here. I mean, I'm assuming you're pretty busy. You know, March, April, you can constantly working on this. Yep, there are long, a lot of long days here. Uh, I got 625 trees on vacuum. Got about 300 pails out, and then we're buying sap from about another five to 700 trees. Um, yeah, we got busy days every day. We're boiling sap, um, checking for leaks. We got a lot of squirrel problems. Squirrels chew on the line and create vacuum leaks. And so then you got to replace a whole line. You got to replace. Some, in some cases, we got to replace a whole line, which would might be like anywhere from 25 to 50 feet. But for the most part, we can isolate it to a little 30-inch area. And this whole system you got here is, you know, fantastic. You got a lot of holes. It's all running into here. Um, can you explain to us a little bit about how this thing works? Yes. This is called a releaser. What we got going on here is we got all our tubing, which are called main lines, which would be the black in, black one-inch tubing, comes into the back side of this thing, into this manifold. This line here would be a vacuum line. This is coming from the vacuum pump up in a different building. So what's going on is all the sap is being sucked out of each tree and down the tubing and it all gravity pitch and it all ends up into this low point into the woods. Comes into this manifold here and this thing's all under vacuum and this thing, what it does is it actually, to let this sap run out of this chamber into a tank without losing all your vacuum on the whole entire system. Um, this is designed specifically for the maple industry and built by the maple industry. And it's pretty common. There's many different sizes. There's some for the small producer on up to the great big producer. This thing will handle about 1,200 trees. Um, so I'm well within the capacity of it. Now um, just one of these things runs at a time on a vacuum, correct? Yes. Right now the sap is coming into this manifold and coming into this chamber and there's no vacuum on this chamber here whatsoever. <clears throat> and what happens is this fills up with sap, gets so high, pushes a float up, which switches this, and the whole thing will switch 
the vacuum to this chamber and that allows this one to balance out the atmospheric pressure and it'll dump all the sap out and into this tank. And on a good day, when the sap is running, this will fill up in a matter of under a few minutes and it'll constantly trip back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now when this thing fills up, it's gonna dump into here. This, well, you can explain how that works, I guess. I don't know if you can see the sap going in there, but what's going on, the sap comes through there, comes into here, and there's a, a big blue float, float ball inside there. And that pushes that float up, which activates this rod, which pushes on this arm here, which automatically switches all the vacuum to this side here. And I can trip this and show you what's gonna happen. Now this side's got all the vacuum on the chamber. I can't break this seal because that's that's tight, that's vacuum pulling on it. This side has no vacuum whatsoever on it. So now all that sap's gonna come into this manifold and come into this chamber. And what that's doing is, why this thing cycles back and forth, I don't lose no uh, vacuum to the woods. It cycles that quick, and I, I have no loss of vacuum in the woods. Where some of your other single releasers, why this thing functions and lets all that sap drain out, there's a loss of vacuum to your back part of your woods. Not much, not really anything to worry about. It's just something that's designed with this design. Now once you know this thing's full, you know, what's the process after that? Where does it go from here? From here, I do not have it set up right now. I got a pump that sits in here and it pumps it up this line here and straight over the driveway and into the sugar shack. And then it's time to go through the RO and come into the evaporator and be boiled off in the maid syrup. Now when you get all your sap collected down in your low point, you said you hook up a pump, you pump that all, and you pump all that sap up to here. Now this is your, what, what is this called up here now? This would be my sap, sap storage room. Um, where all the sap would be stored for when, it's, when I'm ready to go with the evaporator, get the evaporator fired up. So what's going on is I got power down in the woods where we just came from. And there's a float switch inside that tank we just talked about. And that uh, electric pump will automatically pump that sap up here. And it comes up through this feed line right here. It goes through this meter. This meter records all the gallons of sap produced every day throughout the season so I can check my yield and check how I rate my, uh, what the sugar content that is and, and then the ratio. And then if people wanna, I buy sap from other people, people wanna bring me their sap, I can plug in right here. <clears throat> it gets pumped up and it'll still go through the flow meter and onward to the big tank. I got a 1600 gallon stainless steel tank there. Oh, the sap is filtered, it enters the tank and it stays in that tank until I'm ready to process it or I get enough to process, you know, which is typically every day or every second day if I have enough to start up it. It takes at least a thousand gallons of sap for me to have to even think about firing that evaporator sure. up. Yeah. So this tank is just a holding tank then? What this tank, it can be used as a holding tank, but it, what it would be is it's a constant, it's my concentrate goes into this tank. When the sap goes through the RO, the RO separates uh, the water molecule from the sugar molecule. The water is separated and saved or discharged down the drain and then the higher concentrated sugar will come into this tank. And this is what I boil. Whatever the concentrate comes into this tank, when I get enough to fill this up, <clears throat> I'll hook up to it and it's automatically pumped into the sugar shack. Here, once it's run through the RO and goes into here, then we uh, go into the evaporator room. All right, well, let's go check that out, see what that's all about. Now we're into the evaporating room, correct? That's correct. All your sap comes from your holding tanks out here into your evaporating room. And this thing is huge. <laughs> what, what does this thing do? What this thing does is this is a, th a three by eight uh, continuous flow evaporator. What this thing does, this is all run off of firewood. Um, we put about a we're barrel full of firewood in there at a crack and that lasts about 15 minutes. And what this is doing is this is boiling the sap down. So the sap comes into this uh, 
It's a continuous flow that's constantly sap coming into this. There's a float mechanism on here that regulates the level in the pans and allows that sap to keep on pushing forward in here. And it boils it down, evaporates, boil your water off, and the finished product that comes out, which would be this end of the machine, which would be the auto draw, you, it automatically takes the syrup off. So the raw sap in, takes all the, all the, all the water off, and then you're left with your finished product, which would be syrup. So basically you just boil all the water off and you're left with pure syrup. That's correct. What's your output on something like this? I mean, you gotta be able to boil it a lot. With this, this thing, thing cool. will boil about uh, 120 gallons an hour. I can go through uh, boiling on here. And by boiling the concentrate, uh, because the saps run through the RO, I get approximately 15 gallons, anywhere from 10 to 15 gallons of syrup an hour finished product coming off of this in our um, so we 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 make some make a lot of syrup here in a short amount of time. So without that RO pulling off that extra water, you'd be looking at a lot less sap per hour. That's correct. So if I had a thousand gallons of sap, it would take typically take me, you know, ten hours plus would start up and shut down, ten hours to boil that sap. I can run that thousand gallons through the RO, bring it into here, and uh, do that in two hours time. Right. So it's, you know, you're saving 75% uh, less firewood, um, less time in here, and making a lot more syrup. Yeah, saving money in the long run too. Mm -hmm. That's cool, this thing is really neat. All right, now this is the, the last and final step here, I'm assuming, we'll the filter is the bottle it all here. Yep, that's correct. Uh, when the syrup comes off the evaporator, and we get such a 50, 60 gallons of syrup made, uh, then we'll bring it into this room. We'll pour a can of syrup into here, about 15 gallons of syrup into this pan. Uh, this pan we heat it up to approximately 190 degrees. When it gets up to temperature, we run that, we pump that syrup through this machine, which is called a filter press. Um, it takes all the sugar sand and all impurities or whatever dirt is in there, takes it all and it makes that syrup crystal clear. And this machine pumps it right into this thing. This is a water jacketed bottler. And we line all our two bottles up on this cart here, sit on the chair and keep pulling the valve and fill up bottles. We fill about approximately 2,000 bottles a year uh, through this system. It's a smaller system for us compared to some of the bigger producers, but it really works well. How uh, fast in your bottle? I mean, we can do, I can do 60 gallons of syrup in approximately three hours time. Uh, and not a, not a drop is spilled. There's no mess on the floor. It's just a, a really fast process. Heat it up, pump it through, have someone sitting right here filling them bottles up. Uh, someone here sitting, putting caps on the bottles and laying them down and then in the case and then keep going. As soon as this is empty, I got the second batch heated up and we keep sending it through. How big of bottles do you, do you do a couple different sizes? Or? We do anywhere from 8 ounce bottle up to gallon bottles. Okay. Alright, let's just talk about some of the products that you offer here. I mean, you got a couple of different grades of syrup it looks like, some hard candy, even some sugar, I'm assuming is what that is. Yep. Um, syrup is graded on a couple different grades. The grades go grade A, light amber, grade A, medium amber, grade A, dark amber. This will be an example of uh, your light amber syrup. This will be an example of medium amber. And this would be a, a example of dark amber. Um, then from there it goes to grade B, which is a slightly darker than, than this one. And then from there it goes to commercial, which is very dark. Um, we predominantly here make uh, light amber syrup. Uh, we make all grades here, but on a typical season we'll make 90% of our stuff will be light amber syrup. Then we'll drop down to medium towards the end of the season and make uh, very little dark amber. Um, these are some of the sizes we offer. We offer pints, three quarter pints, quarts, um, 
You can package in any kind of package you want. Um, some of the other products we make is pure granulated maple sugar. You take maple syrup, you uh, heat it to a certain temperature, um, let it cool down to a certain temperature, and then mix it in a mix master and all of a sudden it turns into sugar. This is a very healthy alternative to white sugar. You can use it as a sugar substitute or you can just sprinkle it on your toast or a bagel or whatever in your ice cream and it's very good. Does it have like a maple -y taste at all? Yes, it's, it's got a maple -y taste. We typically use our, our light amber syrup to make all our confections. Um, so it's got a very mild maple flavor. Uh, flavor. And as far as the different syrups, I mean, is there a different difference in taste in those two? Or? Yes, there's a slight difference in taste. Your light amber syrup will be a very heavy, light, mild maple flavor. Your medium will be a little bit more pronounced uh, maple flavor. Then your dark syrup will be a nice, robust uh, maple flavor. And then your grade B will be a very strong maple flavor. So there is a noticeable difference in taste. Um, and we also make uh, sugar candy. The kids really like this. It's just another process where you take the syrup and you refine it down a little bit, pour it into molds, and it makes uh, candy. Um, very good, very good maple flavor. It's like eating a sh uh, sugar cube. So then from here, you bottle it from here, it's off to you know wherever you're selling it then? Yep, I got uh, a lot of repeat customers. Uh, people come here during the season and throughout the year. The purchase I sell 75%, 80% of my syrup gets sold through right here. Okay. Um, then I am licensed by the state of Wisconsin and I do sell in a couple stores, local stores, uh, small places. You have, you have a website, I'm assuming? Yes, uh, my website is called inthewoodsugarbush.com. So you can get some information up there as far as you know, purchasing. Yep, all that info is on there. People can purchase our products off of that website. Uh, they can contact me directly through the website throughout the season. Uh, I encourage anybody and everybody to come over here while the sap is flowing and, and check this operation out. Um, you can get my phone number off the website uh, and call me anytime during the season to see if the sap is flowing. Cool. Definitely check out their website, you know, if you're looking to get some maple syrup. Um, we do definitely appreciate that. But let's come up here and, and see everything. This is a cool facility. It's just, you know, it just blows my mind. Yeah, but anyway. I appreciate you guys coming and I thank you. Well, Jeremy left an hour ago and he made a big mistake. Left his pure maple syrup here. So I'm going to take full advantage of that and eat the rest of my French toast with it. So. We hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we thought it was a, a great time, learned a lot of new stuff, and we just wanted to share that with everybody. If you get an opportunity to go look at one of these maple syrup places, whether it be a traditional way of doing it or, or a more modern, up-to-date facility like Jesse Wagner's, I urge you to do it because it, it really is awesome. And I also urge you to get out there and get some pure maple syrup. You won't, you won't be disappointed, I promise you. If you want to order it off of Jesse's website, go to inthewoodsugarbush.com. You can order it on there. It's great stuff. Um, you can check us out on Facebook, and you can also check us out on our website, badgerstateadventures.com. We hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, create your own adventure.